Hi, uh, welcome back to Mrs. O'Gram's Maths. We previously looked at a video of setting up sinusoidal curves and being able to represent them as equations that are in this form that we've got here on the screen. Now, we're going to take a look a little bit more in this video at um, starting with a graph and being able to work out from the picture of that graph the values of A, B, C and D in this equation. So a quick recap, A was the amplitude. Now to get that, we will take the maximum value that we can see on our graph, subtract the minimum value, and then divide it by two. And that tells us how much our graph has been stretched vertically. The B value in the equation is determined by the period or how many repeats there are or the length of the repeat, however you want to think about that. So the period itself is actually referring to the, the length of the repeat, how far our graph goes before it starts to repeat again. So if you do 2 pi or 360 divided by that period, depending on whether you're in radians or in degrees, that will give you the value of B that will give the correct horizontal stretch that we need for our graph. Now C is the distance of our shift to the left. So we'll take a look at our curve and see how much it's been shifted to the left compared to the original sine curve. And that will be negative um, if we have a shift to the right. And finally, our value of D, that's the vertical um, shift. We find that out by doing our maximum plus our minimum and divide it by two. Um, what that will do is help us to see where that center line of the original sine graph has moved up towards. It gives us the average between the maximum and minimum points, um, and that's how much our graph has shifted up by. So let's see this with an example. So let's start off by working out A. Now A was the maximum minus the minimum divided by 2. Now our maximum on this graph here is at 5, the minimum is at minus 1. So this will be equal to, so 5 take away minus 1, which is 6 divided by 2, so our amplitude is 3. Now B is the value that determines our stretch and for that we need to look at the period of the graph. So our normal sine curve would have um, done one period in 360. Um, we're in radians, so we're uh, sorry, we're in degrees, so we're talking in degrees for the rest of this question. So one of them would have normally done in 360. Now we can see here one of these uh, is done in 90 on this graph. It starts to repeat again after that 90 degrees. So we do 360 divided by our period of 90, which is 4. So our value of B will be 4. Next is to look at the value of C, which is our horizontal shift. And we want to look at um, how far left or right our graph has uh, moved along compared to the original sine curve. So the original sine curve um, goes like this where it starts um, at the y-axis at this at this median line here, which on our original sine curve is the x-axis. On this one, that, that middle line that we're looking for there um, happens to be just here. Now, it also goes through the x-axis exactly on that line, so it actually hasn't had any shift left or right for this one. You can also do a similar thing of like comparing where the peaks would go if you find that easier. I think it's easier to look at where it goes through the axis. Um, it might be different for different curves as well, uh, whether it's easier to look at the peak or where it goes through the axis. So in this case, we've got no horizontal shift. So the value for C will be zero. And finally, the value of D, which is the vertical shift. And for that, we do the maximum plus the minimum and divide it by two to get that halfway line, which we actually just kind of looked at when we were doing the um, shift there. So this will be uh, 5 plus minus 1, which is 4, divided by 2 equals 2. And it gives us that halfway line here that we were talking about just before. Now, of those four things, usually this um, horizontal shift is the one that people find the hardest to work out. And I would actually say leave that one till last. A, B and D are the three easier ones to do. And maybe you want to leave C until the end when you've worked out the other ones. Okay, so one last thing is to put this together into an equation. 
in the form that we had on the previous view. So A is 3, sine of 4x. Now we've got, this would have been, I'll write it out in full and then tidy up. So 4x plus 0 for that 0 value of C, and then add 2. So this will be 3 sine 4x plus 2. And of course, um, when you have the ability to check that on some graphing software, you should. So go put it into Desmos or your graphing calculator and check that it gives you the curve that you're looking for. We're going to look at a second example now, but this time it's specified that we want to find the equation for this graph in the form that includes um, cos instead of sine. OK, now this works in just the same way, but we're transforming the cos graph. So let's start with A for the amplitude, which is a quite easy one to see that you can you can tell it's been stretched up by two. The original cos graph would have gone between one and minus one, like so. Um, so this has gone two to minus two. So our amplitude is two. Now for B, we're looking for how many repeats there are within um, 360. Um, so the period of our graph is when it repeats again. So we've got from here to here is the easiest way to see where that repeat is. And you can see that it is still 360. So if you were to put that into 360 divided by the period, you would just get one. So we actually haven't had any change to the period of the graph. Now C being the horizontal shift, we take a look at the original graph started up here at the top at one. So here's the top of our new graph and that has gone out to the right by 45 degrees. Now, if we go to the right, that means it's a negative 45 degrees. Okay, and finally the uh, vertical shift well, you can see actually straight away from this, it's had no vertical shift, but just for the, the fullness of doing this um, in, in the way that you've seen on how to work out D, which is to average out the maximum and the minimum, then we get zero. So the equation for this graph is two cos X minus 45 degrees. We don't have the B in there because it was just one and we don't have the D because that was a zero. Now you can apply those steps to any sinusoidal curve, which means a curve that follows these cos and sine patterns and apply these transformations that you've just seen to either sine or cos. Um, if the question doesn't specify it, I find sine a bit easier to work with, uh, but sometimes the question might specify that it has to particularly be sine or cos.